special, special guest today that will be telling us and talking more about security. But we'll wait for him to introduce himself so we can know who is going to talk to us today. So, Mr. Uh, Frederick, please. Hello. Can you hear me? Over to you, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Very I well, am, sir. You just mentioned my name. I'm Frederick Odorige. I am glad to be here. I am the global coordinator of the Global Coalition for Security and Democracy in Nigeria. And I am based in Hungary. And um, that is all for now. Thank you. I am a military scientist. Let me add that. So, welcome, sir. It's so, so, so glad. It's so, so, so busy. This is a big thing for me to have you here because um, we know we, we, we've been having the the issue of uh, security has been on since 1960, so it's not new. But I think at the at the moment it's becoming worse compared to the way it's, it used to be. So you are here today to tell us what you know about the security in Nigeria, the problem, and how you think we can fix some certain things. So that's why you are here. So talk to us. Sir. We are ready and to listen. We keep digging deep, and we are ready to. To tell them the fact, say it as it is. We we don't want to. Okay, let's keep some things. Just say it and over to you, sir. We are listening. I will be taking. You'll be taking some questions after your okay. your discussion. Okay. Um. First and foremost, I must say that it is a shame that we have a retired major general as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and today Nigeria is witnessing one of the worst security situation in Africa. It is even more shameful that the, 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 the home state of the president, Kassina state, is drenched in blood. So a president that cannot, cannot secure his state definitely cannot secure Nigeria. Today, what we're having is a Kilishi technology Kilishi technology of security because there is no political will to uh, address the issue of security in Nigeria. And the issue of security and welfare are fundamental to the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The primary purpose of government is, in our, according to our constitution, is the provision of security and welfare in one is to fail in all, but this government has failed in all because it has failed in both. So if you look at the security architecture in Nigeria, it seems that it has become a big business for those people that do not care for lives and properties. And that is why you will see that our land is drenched in blood. And you'll also observe that African presidents and other world leaders they no longer send Buhari condolence messages whenever Nigerians are killed. Why? Because they are used to it. They have resigned their faith to the fact that killing of Nigerians has become a culture and it has been accepted by Nigerians. Nigerians are just there complaining on, 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 on social media. They are doing nothing about it. And that is why a neighbor could be killed today. Tomorrow in Nigeria, we dress up and we go to work. Because it's like nothing happened. Some persons are killed on Monday. We mourn them on Tuesday. On Wednesday, they kill again. And we forget those ones that were killed on Monday and Tuesday. And we're just moving on and on. So it is a shame that the Niger Nigerian people have become so silent about what is going on in Nigeria. And when you see that the government of Buhari can dish out 27 billion naira to renovate or so-called renovation of the National Assembly at a critical time of insecurity in the country, you begin to wonder. Now, let me tell you, there is a, there is a drone called MQ-1 Reaper or they also call it Predator B. This is the same drone 
that the Americans used in uh, neutralizing uh, Qasem Soleimani, the Iranian army general in Iraq. That drone, you can just sit somewhere in Abuja, drinking your Coca-Cola or whatever you are drinking. You are pressing your button, and the drone will go straight, hit target, and return to base. That drone, one, one of that drone is about 5.5 billion naira. One. The 27 billion naira that they want to use in renovating uh, the uh, National Assembly can buy five of that drone. If Nigeria has five of that drone, you just go and sleep. What is Boko Haram that a serious government cannot, cannot grind within six months? What is six months? Three months. Because when you send soldiers on ground to go and fight Boko Haram, you are risking the lives of Nigerian soldiers. This is an area battle. You grind them from the air. They have, we have surveillance cameras, drones also, that you can just send into the air. For example, there is Mavic Pro Quadcopter. It's an area surveillance camera. Mavic Pro Quadcopter. One of it is just $2,900. In Naira, that is 1.1 million Naira. Every state in Nigeria can afford to have 100. You just set them in the air. They are giving you information in your security base. You are seeing what is happening in our bushes. Who is Boko Haram and Fulani Esme? You are saying that they are carrying a machete or a AK-47. Then we start to panic. Or they are moving from south to uh, north to south. We start to panic. Let them move. Your camera is watching them. Wherever they are living in the bushes, you are seeing them. You just send your drone, you grind them to dust. You will not even know that somebody was there before. So by the time we have a government, all of these things will come to pass. Because it's a shame that Buari tried to put all these security um, chiefs in government from his region. But he did not do that because he wanted to secure Nigeria. He just did that to secure himself against coup. He's not securing Nigeria. He just put all those people there to secure himself because he's afraid of coup. A coup plotter is always afraid of coup. So he's thinking that, oh, before another Babangida will come, will come and overthrow me, let me put all those people that, uh, that can be loyal to me. That's why you have all those uh, people he has, he has put there. But not today. Is 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 like it's like hell. But the Senate Committee Chairman on Defense is from Borno State. Most of the people are from the the, the North, but they are not doing anything. Now the North is bleeding, and the Northern elites are not educating their people. They are not enlightening them to tell them that look, these are our people that are in government. They are not helping us. Or they just preach to them is religion and build mosques ev ev everywhere. Mosques and churches are good, but where are the schools? Where are the hospitals? Where are the um, security uh, infrastructures? So until Nigeria stands up, as, stands up as a country and begin to invest in security, we should not be talking about development. So what I have just said is that Nigeria needs drones, area drones, like the MQ-1 Reaper or Predator B. And um, I've also said that we need surveillance cameras like Mavic Pro quadcopter. These are area surveillance cameras. We don't need to kill our soldiers. Now, if you look at the issue of security votes, for anybody they kill in your state as a Nigerian, hold your governor accountable. Let's even put Buari aside. Every governor receives security votes every month. What are they doing with the money? With your security vote, every state in Nigeria could even afford this drone I'm talking about. With your security vote, you could build surveillance, surveillance rooms where you are watching everything going on in your state. Every local government, you are, you are seeing everything. But today, governors just donate vehicles. Oh, this governor just donated 30 vehicles to the police. Oh, they just donated 40 vehicles to the police. Vehicles in themselves don't ensure securities. They, are, they have to be gadgets. So if you have a state, I am from Delta. If you have a like Delta receiving two billion every month, and you are still complaining about um, X-Men killing and raping women in the 
pounds, then what is the governor doing? Two billion naira every month. And you are still complaining that you're not safe. And those states receive 900 million naira. Lagos State receives 1.4 billion naira every month. Accra Bomb receives 1.8 billion naira every month. Anambra State receives 850 million naira every month for security votes. What are they doing with the money? The only thing you want to hear, you hear people say that, oh, let's divide Nigeria. Let's divide Nigeria. But their own governors, they're not asking them questions. The former governor of uh, Abia State, Tiodo Oji, every month for eight years, he was paying the security votes of Abia State to a private, into a private account. So within eight years, he stole 48 billion naira. 48 billion naira. The people from Abia State, they kept quiet. But you, you will hear people from Abia State say, let's divide Nigeria. When you are not be able to, to, to challenge your governor. So that the, the Abians don't take it personal. Let's go back to my state. James Ibori was there, stole a lot, went to prison in Britain, came back, and was given cheap taxi titles and all that. Today, it's Pili Pili in a, in a, in a, in a Delta state. Stole the state dry. Today, we have huge insecurity in Delta state. They did not put his cousin, Emmanuel Oduara, to succeed him. What did they do to, 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 to secure our state, Delta state? Two days ago, um, EFCC said that they have seized um, over 5 billion naira from um, Rochas Okorocha. Five or five billion naira. Now, do you know what that state could have done in terms of security with that money? No. Rather, you hear people from Imo State say, let's break Nigeria. Uh, Emeka Ehedioa was a governor for just about eight months. He stole billions, as, we re as reported. So what is the madness about this corruption that Nigerians are keeping quiet about? We don't address issues. We don't talk to our governors. We don't talk to our legislators. They collect security votes. All we just hear is, let's break Nigeria, let's break Nigeria. And the people that want to break Nigeria, they don't even have the strategies. You don't break Nigeria on social media, or you just wear t-shirt, or, or you carry a flag. If you want to break Nigeria, break Nigeria and go. But the fact is that we know that Nigeria will not break, but at least between now and 2023. So that is why I keep telling people, Nigeria will not break be be between now and 2023. Therefore, let all of us cooperate, whether you are Biafra, Niger Delta, Arewa, uh, or Dudua, let us come together and cooperate. If we don't, every other thing is noise. Let us cooperate, let us choose a young leader, by 2023, let us build the Nigeria of our dream. But if you say you want to do this and that and that, some people they want they want Biafra, but they already have presidential candidates for the election of uh, 2023 from the east. You want to break Nigeria, you also have a presidential candidate for Nigeria. Who is, who is the Stephen O? Some people want to do Dua, but they already have governorship candidates for on those state election in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in in October. So who is the Stephen O? If somebody wins as a governor now in all those in all those state 2020, will be there for four years. That is 2024. And you want to do the work. So we will let us stop deceiving ourselves. If Nigeria will break and God wants to let us, so be it. But for now, I don't see Nigeria breaking soon. Let us cooperate. If we don't cooperate, it means that by 2023, a new pharaoh will come on board. Buhari is not, is not chastising us with whips. But the new pharaoh will chastise us with scorpions. If we don't speak with one voice and cooperate now, I have, I want you to understand this. I have 100% for the rights of whoever wants to divide Nigeria. You have your right to secede, to go to your own country. You have the right, 100%. I'm not querying that. I'm querying the fact that there are no strategies for the actualization of those dreams. So before you begin to have these strategies, let us cooperate and build a Nigeria for our dreams. If not, we shall just begin to complain and complain and rant on radio and, and television. So that is something that I think we should take seriously. There is a man called Dr. Osato Ame Osewegi. This is a Nigerian from Edo State. He is the one that manufactures drones for the American Army. It's well, world-renowned with three PhDs 
such a person should be a security consultant to Nigeria with a government that is serious. We have everything it takes to make our country secured and developed. We are too big, we are too blessed to beg. We are too big, we are too big, we are too blessed to borrow. Now, even within our little states, you will find that you will, they will arrest criminals and they will set them free. Our coalition, known as the Global Coalition for Security and Democracy in Nigeria, just um, yesterday, we wrote a letter to the um, Ariel Nakakan for of Yoruba land, Chief Ghani Adams. We are telling him that those 10 illegal uh, gold miners from China, the Chinese that were arrested on the 3rd of May, 2020, that Amoteku that arrested them are conniving with the police to hide the Chinese. Our law in Nigeria stipulates that when you are rich, wants to arrest somebody, you must arrest the person before the court of law within 72 hours. But now some people have taken money and they are hiding the Chinese. We're not going to accept that. Can you do that in China? So if we have no laws for our country, we cannot be respected by foreigners. You come to our country to steal our natural resources. And the unfortunate thing about all of this is that some of these people that mine illegally, the Chinese, they, they are well armed. So they cause a lot of security problems. They have done that in Zamfara state. They also mine in Zamfara. Most of the killings there, there are people that are mining illegal gold and they are all armed. So they are stealing the resources of the people and also destabilizing our security system. So what is the government doing? So we're not going to accept that from Amoteku. If Amoteku is going to work as a security, regional security outfit, they must be transparent and they must work accordingly. Of course, somebody can argue, Amoteku arrested the Chinese, handed them over to the police. The police are supposed to continue their job. Yes, but Amoteku are supposed to follow up if I arrest somebody and I take the person to the police station, it is my job to make sure that the processes of prosecution is completed. So there is a connivance between Amoteku and the police. I are not going to accept that. The letter we wrote to um, the, um, the Arena Kankafo, we also copied the Inspector General of Police and the Attorney General of the Federation, Aboba Kamalami, that we are interested in this. Because the problem with Nigeria is that we have been too silent as a people for many years. We just we just behave like ah now so we see him waiting I go do now not be so you see him you know you get what you're supposed to do and it is to speak up and to act up not just to talk on Facebook now so we must all as a people begin to take our voices out of the social media onto the physical arena of the struggle action time. So by the time you even start to act, there are some people that are not used to acting, taking action. They will say, "Now, nah, nah, I want to, now, nah, nah, I want to start, now, uh, nah, nah, I want to start the fight. Fight with Ghana, fire, uh, fire where me don't fight. Uh, all this thing, fella don't sing that before. I beg you, now today was, now today we go start up. People have to start it. People have to start it, and that is what we have, we have set out to do." Members of the Global Coalition for Security and Democracy in Nigeria have said that, no, we can no longer be silent as a people. So it is time for us to begin to build a citizen-owned government. We have to take our country back from the vampires. And we cannot do that by uh, trying to divide Nigeria or just talking on social media. We must begin to come together we must begin to speak with one voice. We must begin to speak truth to, to, to authorities. Nobody escorted anybody to Nigeria. Nigeria belongs to each and every one of us. It is our common wealth. So these are some of those things that we must do. The point I want to add is that foreign, foreign companies, uh, uh, foreign lenders, they must stop lending money to Nigeria. On the sixth day of uh, December 2019, we protested, that is this our coalition, we protested in front of the World Bank in Washington, D.C. We protested in front of the World Bank, telling them to stop lending money to Nigeria. All the money that they have, they have 
They have, they, have led, they have given to Nigeria. What, what is on ground? Nigeria is indebted over $82 billion. What is on ground? We don't even have stable electricity. We don't have security. We don't have the necessary infrastructure. And you keep borrowing. Now, this money they are borrowing to Nigeria is what the Nigerian government is spending to integrate terrorists. How can a sane government under a retired army general be integrating terrorists with state fund. Now, with the government of Nigeria said that they are they are they are borrowing to fund the entire 2020 budget, which means any money they receive or spend is borrowed, is being borrowed. Now you now borrow money and you now use it to integrate terrorists. You are the more you are integrating terrorists, the more they are killing in Casina. The way they are killing Sokoto, they are killing in Bono. They are killing. What are you integrating? There is something wrong. There is something wrong. And even the, 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 the young army officers that are being killed, they should begin to think very well if the Nigerian government means well for them. So these are issues that we must begin to address in Nigeria. Foreign lenders stop giving money to Nigeria for any purpose because they are stealing the money and using the money to integrate terrorists. So a president that cannot secure his casino state cannot secure Nigeria. And the one of the funniest uh, politicians from the north, they are very most some of them are very terrible people. The North has ruled Nigeria the longest number of years, but today we have 87% of the poorest Nigerians from the North. No schools, no hospitals. They have made the people poorer because they brainwashed them with religion and, and tribalism. So not only does they have betrayed their people, for, not, for the youth in the North to come to Lagos, that is their abroad for them. It's abroad for them. So what have not only that's done? That and these are the things that the MI of uh, the former Emma of Kano, Sanusi Lamido, was talking about. That northern politicians should wake up and develop their region. But they, they, they dethroned him and nobody protested about it. Now, all the things that Lamido talked about, they are happening. They're happening. There are some states in, 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 in the north that for uh, registration into the West African School Certificate Examination, one state, sometimes they, they register just maybe 20, 25 students in an, the entire state. Why? They don't want to empower the people so that the people don't get knowledgeable of their problems because, you know, knowledge is power. So the politician, they send their children abroad, then they make sure that people in the North don't go to school so that they will remain blind. Therefore, I am using this opportunity to call on northern youths that are enlightened to begin to enlighten their people to stop to stop patronizing this crop of politicians. Let us cooperate together. I don't like when people just criticize the region, criticize not criticize. No, I don't want to criticize anybody based on your tribe, your religion, your region, or your political affiliation. We must all come together. You cannot have a successful revolution in Nigeria without incorporating the north. Because they are even the most impoverished. Every Nigerian has been impoverished. Nobody can say this tribe has been more impoverished than the others. We have 371 tribes in Nigeria. So nobody can say we have been more marginalized. Every Nigerian has been marginalized. But it is the time for us now to come together, speak with one voice, and begin to choose leaders that will bring up to our very before the Nigeria of our dream. So that is something about uh, the Northern leaders, because it's a shame that when it comes to politics or time for time for election, Nigerian leaders they will use, especially the North, they will use underage children to go and vote. Such uh, children they also end up as uh, suicide bombers. But now, because they could not manage the children during this uh, COVID nineteen uh, pandemic, they are not deporting children. We shuffle children from Kano to Kaduna. Take some from Kaduna to Gombe. You, are not, you cannot take off children. 
that use us underage voters. That is evil. When like you and I know abroad that we are living in, they pay every child monthly salary just for being a child. Just for being a child, my children receive monthly salary. In a country that is not my country, and we are richer than all of these countries. That is why people like us are angry. Nigeria is richer than more than 12 European countries put together. So when we see that system working, So these are the issues. Here. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you now. Fine. You can hear me, right? Yeah, yes. So these are the issues. I just said that it is painful that we live in foreign countries where their governments are paying our children because they have, they have good political uh, policies. But the countries where we are coming from, the government, the government is deporting children and using them as underage voters and suicide bombers. A government that cannot take care of his children. So I think we have a little issue with the network. really hitting it so hard and the issue of Nigeria gets every, every reasonable Nigeria emotional especially in the area of security hello hello Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Pastor Mike. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, good morning. Okay. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, I'm enjoying the program. Uh, the last speaker is a funnel. I joined it at the middle, but I've been enjoying everything you have been saying. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, what do you have to say about that? I think we lost him. Probably he's going to come back. Okay. Uh, as you can see, I'm uh, inside the bus, but maybe yeah, I, I have a lot to say, but I don't know. I don't know how clearly you can hear me. Yeah. Okay. Eight minutes time. All right. All right. I'll, I'll eight eight minutes time. Talk, will talk, talk, talk. Okay. Okay. It's going to be better. So, Ambassador Tim, okay. over Thank to you. you. Thank you. Okay. Right. Ambassador Tim, so what do you have to say? <laughs> okay. Um, the previous speaker, honestly speaking, he, he actually hit the hammer on the nail. Uh, he, he said a lot of things, which is very, very, much, very much correct. I, I feel so sad because. Um, Nigerians, I'm not seeing Nigerians as being ready to take responsibilities. The issue of security, yes, Americans are protesting, almost the whole world are protesting black, black's life matters, but in Nigeria, no life matters at all. I will tell you, in Nigeria, there's no life, no life matters at all in Nigeria. Because just like he said, somebody will be killed, somebody will be killed, and the neighbor, the neighbor, the neighbor goes to the market. And the next one will go to war. So in Nigeria, I really doubt if any life actually matters. Another thing that gives me much concern is that uh, the readiness of the government to accept, yeah, to accept yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, the readiness of the government to accept innovation. Now look at this. The most painful aspect of it is that great nigerians great nigerians that have the skills technologically that have the skills are being frustrated by the same government where they were being born 
And when they leave this country and go to another country, they become a star. And the, and the government, where they are coming from, their own country, don't even care about them. They don't even care either to bring them back in, to impact, or to solve some problems in the country. This is very, very, very pathetic. This is very, very pathetic. Okay, look at as in, as in my reference of the of the drone specialist, the drone professional that used drone in um, uh, for, for for American Army. Was it not last year? A, a, a young graduate, a Nigerian graduate, who built a drone, who built a drone during his youth service, uh, um, uh, uh, his, youth, his youth course service, built a drone for Nigerian army. Now, when this young man was finishing his service, his service, for Nigerian army to employ him, they started telling him, one, he is not a first class holder, he's a top class degree holder. Two, he's not from the north. Can you just imagine such madness? What actually are they doing to encourage the youth that are coming up with skills? And that is why you see every Nigerian that has something to offer will definitely find a way out of this place. That is it. I like what he said about, um, about the security vote uh, our governors are not using for anything. I think it is high time. It is high time. When I say it is high time, I mean definitely it is high time. Whether it will start today or tomorrow, that Nigerians will sit up and demand for accountability. Those governors, they are responsible. I require, I, 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 I request and I demand that they must account for all this money they have taken, all those money they use for security for uh, security votes. What did they use those money for? Putting in their private accounts. Okay. And nothing, nothing. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. And nothing is being done about it. The citizens are just quiet, sitting back in their homes, moping. Now, in the next election, they will come out and give them 1,000 for them to vote them again. That is an, another, another sad point. They will give them little money. Then who actually will come if they keep on doing this? Who will come up? Because the issue of security in Nigeria, my dear, this, we, can't, we can't even say enough of it. Was it not just last week that criminals who went to the bank and robbed in police state after after robbing bank killed people and went to police station and killed every single soul in the police station? Does it mean that this country, this country cannot do anything to protect the citizens? The issue about security in Nigeria, I don't even know where we're going to start it. We can't even start anywhere. But the point is the point where we just need is that. We need to sit up and demand for accountability. We need to sit up and demand that the government should do the needful. Yes, we voted, uh, will I use the word, we voted, or should I say, they voted, the president. A president who could not even, a retired major general who could not even protect his own state. Is he not the one that will now come and start protecting Nigeria? If any youth now comes up and starts saying, okay, we need change, we need change, we need change, they will come after you. Even the people they are using to come after you, they are not even sensible enough. And not even sure that what is in their skull is brain. It could likely be brain. It could likely be brain. Because if they have brain in their skull, they still have the state of this nation. Somebody will call you up and say, now go after this person because he's saying the truth and you and you keep walking out and, and you just you just walk up to molest the person, to threaten the person. Even most of the time, they will pick the person and kill the person. And the citizens will not say anything. They will arrest somebody and the person will be killed. Citizens will not say anything. Police will arrest somebody, collect bread now, put it in their pocket and now ask the person to go. People will not say anything. A well-known, a well-known criminal will be arrested in the next, in the in the next two weeks. You see the person running around, running along the street. A lawyer will come and start defending the criminal in the court. Start, start raising logic. Which one are we going to count, and which one are we going to name? I think it is high time that the citizens need to sit up, get on their foot, get on their foot. 
and make sure that something is being done in this country. Because if it is not done, I am afraid. The end part of it, I don't think that any life will be safe at all. I'm not sure that any life will be safe at all. So that's my take in the world. Thank you so much, Ambassador Tim. You know, the issue of security in Nigeria has been on, but I have one quick question to, to ask, um, Mr. Frederick. You know, the issue of speaking up, a lot of people, I think they really want to do that. But, um, okay, his network is off. So the, there's this thing that they used to hold people down, which is called fear. We are scared to talk. When you talk, they come after you. So nobody want them to come after. But in fact, your parents will even be the one that will call you to tell you that, oh, don't talk. Your friends, everyone will say, don't talk, don't talk. You know, the issue of politics, once you talk, they'll come after you. They'll come after you. Now, this has been one of the major problems that they've been using to hold everyone hostage. So, Mr. Frederick, I was asking a question. I said, there's this thing that they're yes. using to hold the people down, which is called fear. This is why the people are scared to speak. So what do you have to say about this? My Bible tells me that we have not been given the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we, the people, must know that our signed mind cannot be taken from us by so-called politicians. Now, if you look at what happened in the U.S. recently, when millions of people entered the streets because of George Floyd, how many people can the Nigerian army kill when you have one million persons on the street? So until we begin to put our fear into our and we end up giving that same fear to our children. We are struggling today in Nigeria that we are fighting now. Therefore, it will be most unfair for us to be quit to this horrible and terrible Nigeria onto our future generations. So the issue of fear can be conquered when Nigerians begin to enter the street as a group, not like when a show will leave his, um, his US base, come to Nigeria, call for uh, a peaceful revolution. People are not coming out. Nambi Kanu left his UK went to um, Nigeria, called for their own uh, regional revolution. How many people came out? But by the way, I am not a supporter of Biafra. I'm not a supporter of Oduduwa. I'm not a supporter of Niger Delta. I'm not a supporter of uh, Arewa. I'm, a proud, I'm proudly Nigerian, and I have no apology to that. I know that we, have, we are passing through very difficult times, but our difficult times will not last if we come out and speak with one voice. The country we're in now, they did not divide their countries because they are difficult times. They are fought wars. And if you look at the way our Nigeria behaving, you start to wonder if this, are the, the, this is the national association of Nigerian students that we, that we built in the, in, in the 80s. Because they are, they are all politics, politicians now fighting for their pockets. The day the National Association of Nigerian Students we stand up and mobilize Nigerian youths. That is the day that our freedom will come. In 1989, we organized the SAP riot, uh, Babangida must go. Then there was no media, there was no social media, there was no uh, telephone or this thing, but, but we had a way of communicating and it, it affected all universities. People came out from the street to join us because the SAP, that was the SAP riot. Because the hardship was was is was even it's even better that hardship then is even better than what we're experiencing in Nigeria today. So what are Nigerian students doing? Nigerian students have made history all over the world. In the year two thousand, when uh, Slobodan Milosevic 
election, there was this uh, media law. It was a media law. The students stood up. They said, no, we don't accept this particular law. They protested, and that was how Milosevic won, won, uh, lost the 2000 um, election. These are what students do. Students stand up to challenge government policies. Today, we are fighting COVID-19 and legislators are buying 400 brand new vehicles for themselves. Nigerian students are quiet. They are opening churches and schools are closed. Nigerian students are quiet. And these monies that Buhari and his legislators are borrowing, it is the same students of today that we pay. And most of these monies, they will pay them maybe 20, 30, 40 years when the Buharis are all, are all dead. So Nigerian youth, they don't even know or they don't seem to want to know that their future has been mortgaged by this set of thievery politicians. Now, you must also know that the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, and the Speaker of the Nigerian Senate, Ahmed Lawan, both of them have citizenship in other countries which means they can afford to mess up Nigeria by approving every loan that Buhari wants. And when things turn red, they can escape to their country B with their families. Nigerians must know this. They have dual, dual citizenship. We must not allow them to do that. They are destroying our country, approving every useless kind of uh, loans for, uh, for Buhari. We cannot continue like that. That is why we must all cooperate. Let's not talk about breaking Nigeria when you have no strategy to break Nigeria. Let's cooperate and take all these people, boot them out of office. Don't tell us results don't count during the election. By the time we start to speak with one voice, our results will count. If our results don't count, why do politicians campaign? Why do you think they are campaigning desperately? They just rig part of the election. But that part of the election that they rig is what we must arrest. By the time we start to take on politicians that rig our election, none of them will try to, to rig election again in their entire life. A time we come, which, are, which we need a leader that will put some of all these people into prison, lock the prison door, and throw the key into the ocean forever. That is why they don't want somebody like Shore to be president, because he has that ruggedity. I'm not campaigning for him now, but when the time comes, we shall know. So these are some of the issues we must begin to discuss, talk about in Nigeria. And another thing I want to talk about is that, you know, when you give police officers to politicians as police escorts, it does not make them get serious about security issues. We draw all security personnel from the politicians and they will start to invest in security. We have private security companies in Nigeria. You live abroad. Have you seen any of your senator in Germany there? We're moving around with the six, seven mobile police. Who are you? Never. Who are you? <laughs> you don't even know them. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, they but in Nigeria, so you, see, you see the yeah, but in Nigeria, you see one one uh, as far as every person has six mobile police. Who are you? Senator, we have how many mobile police? Who are you? Buari alone has over 200 security agencies. Securing what? All those uh, speakers and uh, senators, the, the, the senior speaker, the senior president, all those ones, they have like 50 security personnel. Securing who? From who? Securing who from who? So they take our police officers and they expose the rest of Nigerians to SARS and all those uh, street police that uh, stop and search boys for their, check their mobile phone, check their laptop, and got them to ATM machine to withdraw money. Those are the type of police they live for us. But they take the well-trained well, uh, 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 police officers with a stashed uniform to protect themselves. Some of them are living in Abuja. They are mobile police officers protecting their empty houses in their villages. These are not things we must, we must, we must continue to accept. And it is because we are not speaking up as a people. That is why we are undergoing all these problems. So the day Nigerians will stand up and say no, and no, that is the day that we shall be free. So our freedom is in our hands. Freedom is not like, it's not like an apple 
an, an, an apple fruit that falls down on its own when it is ripe. You force freedom to fall. And that is what we, the Nigerians, must do. Thank you. Yeah. And that is what the Global yeah. Coalition for Security and Democracy is set out to do. And I'm, I'm using this opportunity to tell Nigerians, wherever you are, the Global Nigeria, GCN, is now in 40 countries all over the world. We are spreading and registering in different states in Nigeria. So we want to build this forum. We are inviting you wherever you are. Send us an email, join a plot, a chapter. Let us take our country back. Enough, enough of talking. So these are what we are doing as a coalition. Now we are going to sue the federal government. Let me just tell you this one. Very soon, we are going to sue this federal government of Nigeria, the APC. We are suing them for lying to Nigerians with their manifesto that brought them into office in 2015 and 2019. They lied. It's a 419 government. I are not going to allow that. You cannot lie to a people. You promise them 247 electricity. You promise employment. You promise this and that. And you end up not doing it. That is 419 government. That is you are obtaining votes by fraud. Advanced vote fraud. Let me put it that way. So we're going to sue. You are going to hear the news very soon. We're going to sue them. We cannot accept that. Next week, we are submitting a letter to EFCC that they should begin to investigate the Lagos State uh, uh, Speaker, Obasa, for the huge misappropriation of public funds. This is what Nigerians stand up to do because we have been too silent. That is why they, they, they have brought our country this, this poor. We are too rich to be poor. It's an insult to call Nigeria the, 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 the poverty capital of the world. God has blessed us with everything we need as a people to be great. We have 34 minerals spread across 430 locations throughout the length and breadth of Nigeria. Tell me one country has blessed as Nigerians, as, as, as Nigeria. Then I will now run away to break my country that I'm not in Nigeria. When I'm supposed to be proud and Africans are looking up to us, the world is looking up to Nigeria. And I run away to say I'm campaigning for the breaking of Nigeria. When I know what we carry, it's because we don't know what we carry. And the people that are enslaving Nigeria today, there are less than 5,000. Let's, let's count them. Harry is uh, is president. The, the, the 109 senators, the members of the House of Red, the governors, the ministers, count all of them, put add, add all of them to, together. 5,000. We now run away for 5,000 people. He that fights and runs away lives to fight another day. They should be running away from, from us, not with 200 million people running away from 5,000 people. I call on Nigerians respectfully. Let us begin to speak with one voice now or we complain forever. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, sir. You, you, in fact, you have delivered a powerful message to everyone today. I was expecting this anyway. I'm not surprised. <laughs> so whatever thing I've had today, I'm not surprised because uh, this is what I was expecting. You hit the nail at the head. You know, Nigerians, we, we keep talking and just like you said, they will tell you, oh, uh, Fela did this, uh, Ghani did this. Oh, it's not mm. your time. We'll keep mm. doing it. Yeah, because if uh, when Fela and Ghani were doing it, if they had the massive support of the people, they would have gone far. But now we need yes. the people. We, yeah, we need the people to speak up. Just like you said, 5,000 people holding a country of over 200 million down. And we want to run. If we can get just 10 million people, we can change Nigeria. Just 10 million. Yeah. If we can get 10 million people, we can change the country. We don't even need the 200, just 10 million. But the students that are supposed to lead, like you said, in fact, those people, <laughs> they are even worse than the politicians these days. In the students' union, they are even worse. During the election, too, it's almost the same thing. Like the, the difference is the manifesto. They go for debates. That's the difference, which is what happened in the uh, last election. There was debate. But if you see most of the debate and you, if, if people were still campaigning for these people, when you see that they cannot, they don't even know what they are doing. They don't even know what they are, they, they, they are, they are going to do. You ask a question, we are telling the super job to, to answer, answer what they want to say. You see, these people are not ready. They are even confused before going to the, 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 the seats. 
So we'll keep adding our voice. We'll keep talking. Thank you so much, Ifas. You you made my day. The issue of Nigeria. Will make Thank you very you much. Emotional. You almost feel like crying when talking about Nigeria. We are supposed to be proud so as a Nigeria, as like you said, but we cannot be proud at the moment because of the the the, the corruption uh, cases. And out there, these people think the leaders are good, that Nigerians are bad. Nigerians are bad. Nigerians. So when you when you stand to be, uh, with some white people, they see you like, oh, you are a criminal. You are this, but when you see a politician, you respect them. The real tips, people that can stand before the world and lie. Buari mm -hmm. can stand before the world and tell you that, oh, I have sort settled the issue of Boko Haram. There's nothing like that again in my country. This is this is the highest level of lie. You stand before the entire world and you lie. And uh, 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 an old man like that. So this thing will keep doing it, sir. I'm fat. You 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 really made my day. I'm so happy. To hear all this delivery today, and I hope that most Nigerians. Thank you very much. Yeah, they they will hear this, and we'll keep we'll make a change. We'll keep adding our voice and doing what we can do. And um, I would really appreciate that the issue of the dispute, legal state speaker, it should be pro. But what do you think? Do you think EFCC will go further and do that? Um. Sometimes EFCC behaves like uh, a toothless bulldog uh, because they allow themselves to be politicized. And it is also the fundamental problem in our constitution. Now, when you have a president appointing the EFCC boss, these are things we must revisit in our constitution. Now, when you have the president appointing Inspector General of Police, Chief of Army Staff. No, because these people are in very sensitive positions that must be left independently to work for the country. So what we need in Nigeria is a brand new constitution, brand new constitution, not, re not reviewing the constitution, because the current constitution is hinged on the original 1979 constitution that was amended in 1999. So now we need a brand new constitution. One, we need regional restructuring. Two, we need diaspora voting. Three, we need electronic voting. Four, these are how we can solve the issue, the problems in Nigeria. Once we do this, and you have a constitution that is taking power, from the Baba, the, from the Buharis, not to uh, appoint the EFCC boss or the uh, Inspector General of Police. By the time we start to do all of this, by the time we say, okay, in the constitution, let me just digress a little. This security vote that they are giving to governors every month is not in the Nigerian constitution. Mm. So why is the government doing this every month? If you must give money to, gov to governors every month, use that money to form more regional outfits within the states and give this money to them. You understand? So yeah. by the time, so back to your question, EFCC, um, when Tinubu was, uh, was petitioned by Adeyanju, till today, EFCC has not, uh, uh, has not acted on that. Mm -hmm. With time, the, our coalition will petition EFCC and take them to court, compelling them, compelling them to 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 prosecute uh, 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 Nobody Nobody's above the law. Just like I said, we did not escort anybody to Nigeria. So we are watching what EFCC is going to do with this case of uh, this case of uh, uh, Tinubu. We are just watching. We are hearing that it's even dreaming to be president of Nigeria. Oh, we have been insulted enough. We have been insulted enough. <laughs> if somebody is a member of if somebody is a member of APC today, and you are a national leader or one of the leaders of a, of a, of a APC, and you are seen to this ugly Nigeria, you are not able to advise Buhari what to do. To address the economy or to address the security situation, you are not able to do that. Then what are you coming to offer to us in 2023 when you cannot offer simple advice to the president of Nigeria? Then that is why I'm saying that the APC government is a terrorist government, and that is why I'm saying that PDP is not better, 
And that is why I'm saying that Nigerians should tear their APC and their PDP card. Let us have a national reconstruction. Let us become political, poli poli politically born again by bringing in fresh candidates, fresh political parties. Enough. How can somebody waste 16 years as PDP of our national life? Now, Buhari is going to waste another eight years. 16 plus 8 is 24. A child that is 24 years has finished university. We cannot accept this. We cannot accept this. We are talking about our common wealth as a people. It's our country. It's vexatious and una absolutely unacceptable. Nigerians, wake up wherever you are. Please leave these regional agitations. Let's begin to take what belongs to us. Because one day I will, I will return home. I will not die abroad. I will, I, will, I will return home and I don't want to be teaching my children how to own generator or explain to them how uh, the borehole water is supplying water into the room and this is where we own the borehole. This is how we own the generator. I cannot be doing that because they have not seen generators before. So we must begin to build our countries. If you see the discrimination going on all over the world against people of our race, it is because they know that we are coming from rich countries but we don't have the managerial acumen we don't have the material acumen to, 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 to take us from poverty. That is why they don't like us, not just because of the colors of our skin, because they know we are coming from poor countries. But the fact is that we are not poor. We are not poor. We decided to remain poor. So by the time we start to build our homes, make ourselves rich, they will respect us. If an American with the same skin color like me now, if we stand in Europe just for his accent, Europeans will respect even more than me because they know where it's coming from. A powerful, it's coming from a powerful country. For that, that is an example. So these are just the issues we must begin to really address. EFCC, they are trying, and I really appreciate what they are doing, but it has been politicized, and they must not allow themselves to be used as uh, political jobbers against the opposition. And only a brand new constitution can change all of this. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. You know, like just like you said, let me quickly add this. I know there is a police control in France. So the police officer told me, said, um, go back to Nigeria. Go and fix your country. So just stop there. You leave Europe, go back to your country. Now our forefathers fought for this place where you are now. Our forefathers fought for it. So you go and fight for your country and stay in your country. You know, just like you said. We really need to do this because no matter how it is, we are Nigerians and we must, it must reflect in you. Even if you have a nationality, you have changed, you, you have a German citizenship or whatever, you are still in Nigeria. You need a place that you can call a home. And when you, when you, when you come from a place, okay, they know that oh, you are from a good country. You'll be respected. Just like you said, they will respect the Americans more. Meanwhile, you you you, you might even be you might even look good more than these people. But because of where they come from, they will respect them more than you. This is really, really a big challenge. So I thank you so much for your time. I'm really, really grateful for having you today. Can I can I leave you with a parable? I want to leave you with a parable. All right. Okay. <laughs> for those of us that live abroad and you think that you have city. And say Nigeria, I will not go to Nigeria. My children will not go up, will not go to Nigeria. They are all born and bred here. Uh, they don't go home. I don't care about that country. Blah 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 blah. I want to tell you one parable, and the parable is this: the palm tree can live all its life in the river, but one day it will never become a crocodile. Yeah, all right. <laughs> You're right. Thank you very much for having me here. Thank you so much, sir. I will look Thank forward you. to some other time to bring you on and on. We'll keep digging it deep here on this program. We want to be saying the facts, say that it is. We don't want to spare them. Look at the issue of uh, those states now, APC fighting themselves. <laughs> Do you have anything to say about that before we go, sir? Oshomole is a tamagant. Oshomole fought Godfatherism under Tony Aneni. Today, he wants to put Edo State into his pocket. But I am watching 
if the Edo people will become so gullible, they will allow an Adam Soshomole to bring in an, an, an Osage Ize Eyamu, whom he condemned. He publicly called Ize Eyamu a thief, a courtist that poured acid on a student in Uniben. He called him a, 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 a managerial novice, an inept leader. He condemned him. You now bring a person from another party You know, <laughs> Edo, we should, we, we should open our eyes. <laughs> All the adults, you should open your eyes and choose wisely. Choose wisely. And uh, we should be ready to speak up. We are talking of Nigeria. Let's speak up in Nigeria. At this moment, the adults should be ready to speak up. Say what you want. If you want, say, I'm almost fine. So every day, it, the politics is not a do or die affair. Election doesn't want the life of even, even the goat. So it is not worth dying for. Why will you still buy you know, this thing is going to escalate to something really, really different. It's sad that uh, we we have this kind of people. Before you know, you see that during the, during the election, you, they will come up with cost class, which is one of the most common and annoying things. We all have one common enemy, which is our leader that has kept us inside their pockets. They want us to be living the way we are living now. So the Edo should be ready to take Edo back. Thank you so, so much, everyone, for joining us today. We all had an amazing time because Derek really delivered so, so much powerful things. And I want every one of us to learn from this. We should, we should, we should learn from this. There is so much in the set today that we should learn from. Now, do you have anything to say quickly before we go? Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. I've been, in, I've been enjoying the program. Yeah, thank you for having me on this program. Yeah. yeah, my name is Pastor Mike. Yeah, I'm uh, in the program you. from Italy. On the issue okay. of security, uh, I thank God. But since there's no time on on my side for this program. Let me just quickly chip in some of the things he said about uh, division of Nigeria. You know, I, I, I strongly agree with him. I don't believe in Biafra. I don't believe in Ududua. I don't believe in Niger Delta. But when it comes to security, because there's no time, maybe some other time when this topic come up, I have a lot to say about it. You have to talk of security of the food, the security of the person, of the citizen, a, a House of Rep member once asked at the floor of the House that what is the value of the, the value of a citizen of Nigeria? That question to today has not been answered. But let me just say what is happening in Edo because I'm from Edo State. It is a okay. shame. So it is a shame. We have, uh, we almost yes. out of our time. Yeah, I understand, Chris. It is a shame that uh, the the the, go the, pres the sitting governor, which is a member of APC, is fighting himself inside his own house. Because we are talking of bringing out fresh parties, the youth taking over. I, I see, I like the uh, governor Baseki for one thing, for you know, bringing in youth, a lot of youth into his, uh, into his government. But at the end of the day, he messed the whole thing up. He messed the see, I will not condemn people because I, I don't condemn people on what they say. What see, politics is a game. If I if it's, it's a competition, if I want to win this competition, I must do anything and everything possible to condemn my opponent. And my opponent also, in return, will do anything possible to condemn me. So whatever. Uh, Oshomole would have said in the past against Isaiah Yamu or Isaiah Yamu would have said against uh, Oshomole. That is not my business, but who are these people? That is my own ideology. I try to know if you are contesting for a position, who are you? What are your plans? I don't want to know about your past. Tell me what you have to, what you have, what you want to give to the other people. I'm from a state. You know, I fight human trafficking. 
with all my all my strength in this Italy. If, if that is the reason why I came to Italy, because that stigma, uh, that stigma of a dope people uh, known for trafficking, it was so embarrassing. That's why I came here to fight this deadly trade. And today, I can tell you with my contribution, uh, with great respect to the Obo of Bini, Obo, Obo Atope, NAPTIP, and other agency, trafficking of a human person has been reduced at least with 70% in Italy. So we are rebranding our name as Edo people. Now, come to think of it. Oshomole did not see himself as godfather. Uh, I looked at the whole saga from the beginning. When a governor said his second term is non-negotiable, that is a speech of a godfather. When a governor said he earned it, he deserved it, that is imposition. You are imposing yourself on us. You know, I look at that statement. I said, okay, I know what to do. I traveled to Nigeria. Uh, Mr. Isaiah Yamu, what, do, what are your plans for those state? Let me hear about you, but in the past, are you truly a thief? If this man is truly a thief, as Oshomole claimed in the past, he stole, he did this, he did that, he did that, he condemned. I went to the University of Benin. You understand? The year he, they said, is there Yamu pour acid on uh, somebody in the uh, University of Benin? I was in the school then. I was in the University of Benin then. He talked about NAS. That's when NAS, that is when NAS were NAS. We were the one in the, the late 80s and early 90s. In this situation, even the days of Moses Osagede, may, Moses Osagede, may you so rest in peace. We fought hardly against bad leaders. When we say we are coming out in the street, we come out fully. We don't care, we are not afraid of the tear gas, whatever it is. But nevertheless, I want every youth that is coming out to contest any position, the likes of Shore and everything. You see, let me tell you, the problem of Nigeria, the problem of Nigeria is not really the security agency, it's our mindset. It is our mindset. If you if you have a good idea, somebody will be out there who say, Siam. See, now now let you do this word. Now let you do it. It happened here. You know, today I can tell you the ambassador of uh, Nigeria to Italy is buying the ideas of 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 of, of our suggestion. The leadership of uh, Nunai, the National of uh, Nigeria Association, something mm -hmm. odd. We are doing very well, helping the Nigerians in Italy. Yeah, and the ambassador is. That has a listening here. We, you know, people like our ambassador here are the people we should, we should look on to, to be leaders of Nigeria because he embraced whatever suggestion. He listened to the youth. He listened to the commoner. So my idea on a final note concerning Edo State, because I, cannot, I have a lot to speak on security because you said there's no time. So uh, when it comes to Edo State, I will say whatever is happening to the state now, the youth should rise up and fight against corruption. Thank you very much. Let Thank me not you. take your time. Thank you so much, sir. Well, next week, you'll be joining us, so we will have enough time to talk. We have a special guest next week. Yeah. I'll uh, be coming and yeah. uh, joining Thank us you. next week. So we'll, we'll discuss about that later. Yeah. So thank you so much, everyone, thank for joining us. We had an amazing time. And uh, I will say again, in fact, I guess today I was not expecting less from that. <laughs> I know what's going I, I, I was exactly what he said is what I was he spoke, expecting. He spoke, he, spoke, he spoke very well and he touched every area. Every of area with his short time. Every area. Every you know, area. I want, to elaborate on most of his, I want to elaborate on most of his point, but there's no time. Maybe no, by no next time. week. Yeah, we'll you know, do I, do, next I do. I do follow him on YouTube. I follow him very well. Very, very well. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> thank you so much, sir. And uh, Ambassador Tim yeah, from Abuja, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, and uh, Pastor Mike from Italy, thank you. My name is Christopher. I'm broadcasting from Germany. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Don't forget, next week, join us next week. Next week, it will be 4 p.m. Nigeria time and 10 p.m. 5 p.m. European time. Thank you so much.